The Oblivion Syndrome, written by Benjamin Wax. Robert, a long-range government cartographer, uh, is lost. His ship, dead in space, no hope of rescue. But the odd thing is, Robert doesn't really care. Can Victoria, his sexy shipboard computer, bring him back from the edge, the edge of oblivion? What time is it? It is now 19.22 and 15 seconds Earth Central Time. How long before you die? If my circuit deterioration continues at the present rate, I will lose AI capability in 8 hours 46 minutes. How long before I die? I will lose life support capability 5 hours and 12 minutes after that. What time is it? It is now 19.23 and 56 seconds Earth Central Time. Mm. How long before you die? If my circuit deterioration continues at the present rate, I will lose AI capability in 8 hours, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. How long before I die? I will lose life support capability 5 hours and 12 minutes after that. What time is it? It is now 19.24 and 54 seconds Earth Central Time. How long before you die? I told you that before, Robert. Uh, how long before you die? If my circuit deterioration continues at the present rate, I will lose AI capability in 8 hours 44 minutes. How long before I die? I'm really not sure that this is healthy, Robert. How long before I die? I will lose life support capability 5 hours and 12 minutes after that. What time is it? Psychological decisions are always difficult for me to make, Robert, but I do think there must be some way you would prefer to spend your last hours. What time is it? It is now 19.25 and 3 seconds, Earth Central Time. Perhaps you'd like to watch a movie. I'm not usually allowed to give you access to my video files, but in this case I would make an exception. Mm. How long before you die? Long-range cartographers often die as a result of unforeseen environmental factors. You have nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> How long before you die? If my circuit deterioration continues at the present rate, I will lose AI capability in 8 hours, 42 minutes. There was nothing you could do to prevent my hull breach. <laughs> How long before I die? If it's any consolation, the lack of certain elements in space will preserve your corpse perfectly. <laughs> How long before I die? I will lose life support capability 5 hours and 12 minutes after that. Would you like something to drink? What time is it? Robert. What time is it? A ship has come into sensor range. On screen. View screen is damaged beyond repair. Where's it coming from? Uncharted space. Is it one of ours? Very unlikely. No one else should be out this far. Hmm. What's it doing? It appears to be on an intercept course. Did they spot us first? Impossible to tell. I see. Robert. Perhaps we should be doing something? Negative. Robert, logic dictates... Negative. It. Robert, I believe that regulations Try demand... contacting them. Send the standard list of all decipherable codes and languages repeated until they reply. Yes, Robert. Robert, I can't help but notice how unenthusiastic you seem at this new turn of events. Robert, while I should stress again that it is very difficult for any AI machine to make psychological evaluations... Your behavior does not seem normal. Any response? Not yet. Your behavior does, however, seem to fall within the boundaries of a psychosis first diagnosed over a century ago by Proxima colonist Jan Harburg. You're certain the ship does not match in the registers of any encountered species. Rechecking ship registry. The condition is called oblivion syndrome. Match found? No match. It is a very dramatic name for a psychological condition. This may be a first contact situation. <laughs> but from the records, Dr. Harburg was a very dramatic man. He first noticed it in ship pilots who spent significant portions of their lives in space. Like you, Robert. Mm. Dr. Harburg wrote that it was a form of suicidal urge. 
It occurs when someone has concluded that death is inevitable. Once this occurs, the only steps they will take toward self-preservation are those minimal steps demanded by whatever rules and regulations they follow, thus satisfying any sense of duty they have left. This occurs even when circumstances change and become more hopeful. Dr. Harvard gave numerous case studies of long-time space pilots engaging in only minimal response in crisis situations when greater effort could have saved them. Since the syndrome usually occurred among space pilots, Dr. Harper suggested that the vacuum of space was gradually sucking out their desire to live. <laughs> as though it were a tangible thing, or that they were losing their inner fire inside the infinite darkness. I'm uncertain as to whether he's being metaphorical. There are several medications which have been known to counter the effects of oblivion syndrome. If you like, I could try to synthesize one of them. The ship is responding to our code list. It states that there are several languages they can respond in, including English. Confirm that. The ship is asking us to stand by for a message. I really think that this new development may offer us a chance to make it out alive, Robert. We have an open channel. Is our audio damaged? Not significantly. Two-way audio. <clears throat> Robert. Yes, Victoria? Be polite. Channel open. Approaching ship, this is the cartography vessel Victory of the Soul Coalition. Be advised that you are on the limits of Coalition space. May we know your designation and intent. Robert, I'm suspending audio for a moment. What? Is it, Victoria? I know it's not standard in a first contact situation, but we may want to mention the repairs we need. Reopen the channel. I can feel my hull bridge, Robert, and my reactor fluids leaking. Reopen channel. Channel open. Unknown ship, will you respond? Salutations, cartography ship Victory. Is this in fact English I am speaking? Yes. Whom am I addressing? I am Raskin, master of the Carnivalen Convoy. I bring you greetings from the rest of the universe. Your species? We are a collection of species, and we never give our true names. I don't understand. Truth is in the eye. Not the word. You will see. What are your intentions in Soul Coalition space? You don't really care about the answers, do you? What? These questions. You don't really care what I say. It's as though you're reading them from a form, following a procedure. That you ask the questions is important. The answers are irrelevant. What are your intentions in Soul Coalition space? I wish to be relevant, Captain of the Victory. Tell me how I may be relevant. What are your intentions in Soul Coalition space? To entertain! What? Gotcha. I'm sorry? Admit it. You're curious. Uh, Carnival and Convoy, please explain intentions. To entertain you. We offer a program of a variety not seen in your galaxy for centuries. Indeed, in this day and age, our services are unique in the universe. Unique. Unique. I need further clarification, convoy. We are the universe's last traveling freak show. And you, my uncaring friend, shall be our first audience in this sector. Unnecessary, convoy. I will transmit a navigational chart displaying the location of outpost Beta 17. You will proceed there for a more official welcome into Soul Coalition space and for a more complete debriefing of our laws and protocols. What about you? I... I am not qualified for diplomatic protocol or medical examination of alien life forms. I will hold Don't my position. Don't you want to see our show? I can't help but notice that your ship appears damaged. That's none of your concern, convoy. Robert, I really think... Audio transmission off. 
I command this ship. You command me. Yes, don't contradict me during negotiations. Robert, I believe they may offer to help with repairs. It's my judgment call. Robert, you must try to get the ship repaired. It's regulations. I am in command. Point of Procedure 763, Section A. Statement of Purpose, Paragraph 3. Code of Conduct, Second Draft. Line 19 and Document 4. 45th Principle. Eighth premise. 7th Congress. Executive Memo 115. 14th Treaty. In Appendix A12 of 2132. I'm in command during negotiations. Computer voice off. Open audio channel. Alien ship, we are transmitting navigational charts to Beta 17. Proceed there immediately. Ah, thank you. We shall certainly begin at this station you mentioned. Then welcome to Soul Coalition Space, alien convoy. Good luck. It occurs to me that neither of us is really satisfied with this resolution. Carnival and Convoy, we must obey protocols. Captain, I think we shall repair your ship. I... I can't accept such generosity. It's not generosity. You are a representative of your own portion of space. And while we have traveled the length and breadth of the universe, always receiving the same reaction from the populated legions, a test audience is always wise. You shall see our show. This will give us valuable insight into your coalition. In exchange for this valuable service, we shall repair the damage you have suffered to the best of our ability. It is a fair exchange. Now, I'm not sure I can agree to those conditions, Convoy. Well, you don't seem to be going anywhere, so we'll have plenty of time to discuss it. At present speed, it should take us a few hours to reach your position. Once that's done, we'll meet to discuss it. I can't let you aboard this ship without proper authorizations. And I won't let you aboard mine unless you're going to see our show. We'll meet in neutral territory. I don't understand. You will. I shall contact you again when we arrive in a few hours. In the meantime... It has pleased me to be relevant. Carnival and Convoy, out. Computer voice on. What time is it? It is now 1937 and 13 seconds, Earth Central Time. Robert, please don't take away my voice again before we die. I'm going to sleep. Robert? Robert? What? Robert, I think you should wake up. What is it? The alien ship has arrived and will begin instituting repairs shortly. They have asked to meet with you. They can't come in the ship. They won't need to. They'll launch service robots, which will approach the ship from outside to repair the hull breach. They also have several of the elements which have been leaking from my reactor core and coolant system. And after inserting them in my system, they can seal those leaks. They can provide new wiring and conductors as well. You negotiated all this. While you slept. You have no authority. It's done, Robert. I don't want to die. Do you? I never met a machine with a will to live. You have to meet with them now. To provide a neutral space, they've constructed some kind of passageway between our ships. Passageway? A zero-gravity corridor of some kind, made out of a translucent material. Its molecular composition is quixotic. It may be organic. I can't tell. Come to the airlock. You'll see. Robert, I find human minds very difficult to understand. There are too many variables in their psychology. Too much background information. But I am growing more certain that something is very wrong with your mental condition. If the Carnival and Convoy hadn't been insistent, you would have let them go on without asking for repairs. Before meeting with them, I do recommend that you take medication. Don't you find that suspicious? That they would offer to make repairs? Yes. In exchange for... My observing their show. Yes. 
What do they really want? Robert, I'm concerned that in your present condition, I haven't got a that condition. That you would be unable to tell suspicion from suicidal urges. I can think of nothing which they would gain by any deception that they could not gain through force. We are virtually helpless. But a circus. A freak show, Robert. They specifically use the words freak show. It's certainly possible. Sufficient improbability equals impossibility. We're out past charted space, Robert. We must expect the unlikely. Why? Why is it that our experiences of the probable grow worthless with distance? Because there is more in heaven and earth than is dreamt of in your philosophy. Who <sighs> said that? I don't know. It's an anonymous quote preserved over time. It's not true. We live in an infinite universe with finite laws. There's only limited variation. I find it fascinating, Robert, that you are willing to debate an absurd question of philosophy, but not to request repairs that will save your life. My God, what is that? It's the meeting place they've constructed. A zero gravity tunnel between our airlocks, with an atmosphere capable of supporting both life forms. It. It looks like a jellyfish. The thought had occurred to me as well. I've never seen anything like it. Nor I. What do they want? They want you to open the airlock and float out into the construct. Once you have done so, the service robots will be launched and my repairs will begin. No, I don't trust them, Victoria. Of course not. Trust is based on understanding. We do not understand them, therefore trust is impossible. My concern is that you are mistaking apathy for caution. I'm not going out there. Robert, every human encounter is based in part upon the fight or flight response. This is your most basic survival instinct. Your response to this situation, however, is to take neither of the proffered choices. Please, consider this logically. No matter how dangerous these creatures may be, they cannot possibly be more dangerous than the status quo. You are choosing certain death over the unknown. Your reaction is fundamentally inhuman. You are suffering from the Oblivion Syndrome. I don't want to meet their freak show. You must. It's protocol, if nothing else. You are a government cartographer in a first contact situation, and a request has been made for a direct meeting by an alien life form whose intentions can by no means be deduced as hostile. You must obey regulations. You cannot die while abandoning your post. It's in the book, Robert. Section 7, I believe. Section 7.5, subsection B. You always were better at remembering these things than I was. You know what you have to do. I'll come back. I hope so. Sound conducts in the tunnel, and my external short-range sensors are still functional. I'll be right here if you need me. What time is it? My chronometer is broken. You're lying. I'm opening the airlock now. Good luck. are the drones that will fix your ship. Welcome! Welcome to the Tunnel of Light. You're a raskin. Master of the Carnival and Convoy. Greatest showman of the Outer Ring. Though uh, not the wealthiest. You look human. I am not. You look human. Looks, looks, looks are my business. Convenient illusion. You speak English? Yes, uh, fortuitous coincidence. You, however, are human. Yes. And you are the majority species in this uh, coalition you have made? Mm, by a slight margin, yes. There are six or seven other races that we've found. Marvelous! A mixed audience is a good audience. It stirs up so much more buried sentiment. What do you want, Raskin? Want? To perform. What is the Mona Lisa without a museum? What is Beethoven without a sympathetic ear? I have within my ship the most horrifying freaks of the universe, and they are nothing when not loathed. They require it. The only consolation one gets in uh, that condition is the effect one has on others. I don't believe you. 
You don't believe in freak shows either, do you? Not on this scale. Meaning what? A freak show can exist with one species or one planet. Maybe even with two similar species. But you claim to be traveling across the universe and within this galaxy alone, the diversity of life is clear. It's impossible for you to horrify them all. You don't believe in ugliness, then? Or evil? Not as absolutes. No, of course not. No civilized race does. You all realize that such standards are arbitrary, cultural, that a man's perspective depends on where he stands. You are wholly egalitarian with your visions of the public good. Long before you reach the stars, you exonerate your own hearts, deciding there is nothing evil or ugly in them, or the world. And yet, we exist on every planet. In the corner of every city or commune or hive, you will find outcasts. The unwanted untouchables, the undesirable. No civilization has ever eradicated us, cured us, or even diminished us. No amount of moral philosophy has ever reconciled your revulsion of us with your lofty sensibilities. It never will. Spread light across the entire universe. And we will still exist in the shadows of your own minds. Theorize that we are impossible all you wish, but you cannot ignore the fact that we are. What? Have you nothing to say to this? I still don't know what you want. I find your apathy to the truth most aggravating. You're looking for a reaction? We live by reactions. What I want, human, is for you to see our show. And then I want to take it to every solar system in your galaxy. And then to Earth itself. But now, tell me, what is it that you want? I have ordered your repairs. I have offered you hospitality and entertainment and your survival. And you have said nothing. You are dying, human. Your quietus shall leave you as cold as the void. Your stillness shall fade into everlasting silence. Care you nothing for this? So, you do not. Then I have one more thing to offer you. Why does the master of a freak show have so much to give? You can find everything in a freak show. Every emotion from pity to lust, every shape and form, every texture. The whole universe is reflected in the eyes of the disfigured. Your species learned this once. Now we travel to Earth ahead of a fiery comet to teach it to you again. But you, my friend, you may receive something else. As an inducement to see my show, I will offer you more than just your ship, your survival. I promise you the recovery of your will to live. I don't trust your benevolence. I am not benevolent. I am a teacher. But you, my friend, are interested. Yes. For the first time, I see a glimmer of hope in your eyes. Your will to live. Come with me, and it is yours. The show will bring it back to you. This one thing can I offer you. This one inducement do I have. You will come. I don't trust you. You don't have to. I don't want to see your freaks. But you cannot resist the reward. It is ever thus. I'm scared. Not yet. Not yet. Repairs complete. Internal diagnostics activated. Engines fully functional. Life support systems, fully functional. Communication systems, 
All long-range communication systems still inoperable. Short-range communication, fully operable. Chronometer, repaired and fully functional. Weapon systems, offline. Power systems, 70% capacity. Memory bank. Victoria! Victoria, let me in! Robert! Can you hear me? Let me in! Let me in! Robert, are you all right? God damn it, Victoria! Open the airlock! Open the airlock! Airlock open! Robert, what happened in their ship? Open channel to beta 17! I'm sorry, Robert, but all long-range communication systems are still inoperable. Damn them, then fire the engines! Fire the engines! What about the Carnival and Convoy? Just get moving towards beta 17! Plotting course toward beta 17. Oh, God. What is wrong? Just go! Fire thrusters! Firing thrusters! Faster! Maximum speed! Approaching hyperspace! We have to beat them to beta 17! What happened, Robert? What happened? Completing long-range scan of sector. No sign of alien convoy. We appear to have outrun them, Robert. Say that again, Victoria. Say what again? My name. Say my name. Robert. Oh, it sounds so good when you say it. Robert, what did you see on board that ship? The whole universe reflected in their eyes. Isn't that what Raskin said? I saw ugliness, Victoria. Absolute ugliness. And evil. It exists, Victoria. Evil exists. Robert. Say it again. Say my name again. Robert, I don't understand. There are millions of them. A million outcasts all around me. And inside me, too. A million dark, impossible things. As much as I wanted to run, I couldn't. As hard as I tried to look away, I couldn't. I couldn't ignore them. You don't know. You can't know. They wanted me to, to join them. To stay with them. They reached out for me and held me. They attacked you? No, it wasn't an attack. It was an embrace. And for a moment, for a moment, I wanted, I wanted to be there with them. Robert. And then one of them, one closest to me, I looked in its eyes, its bloody eyes, and I saw. What? A mirror. And then... It spoke my name, that voice, and then I knew. Somehow I, I broke away. Now we've got to get to Beta 17 and warn them. Warn them before that freak show gets there. Warn them before they go into that ship, before they see themselves. Robert. You have a lovely voice, Victoria. I'll never turn it off again. Thank you, Robert. Victoria? Yes, Robert? What time is it? It is now 23.13 and 34 seconds, Earth Central Time. What is your reason for asking? I guess you're right. There is no reason. It's just that... I don't know. Time seems... different now. George and the Red Giant was written by Eric Brown, with additional dialogue by Sean Redlitz and Brian Smith. Based on the short story, George and the Comet by Stephen Baxter. George and the Red Giant was directed and produced by Brian Smith and starred Peter Jurisic as Phil Beard, Andreas Katsoulis as George Newbold, Rebecca Nice as Carrie Beard, and George Czar as the Builder and the Medic. Foley sound effects were performed by Sue Zizza and David Shin. Sound design, John Colucci. The Oblivion Syndrome was written by Benjamin Wax, directed and produced by Brian Smith. And The Oblivion Syndrome starred Andrew Jaffe as Raskin, Rebecca Nice as Victoria, and Paul Singleton as Robert. Sound design by John Colucci. 